Last time. Oh, bollocks. And now. Just thunder. So Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has been quite an interesting game, mostly because I love the accents. Still, it was a nice chat. But also because it's a huge JRPG that has amazing character designs. But man, this is so disappointing. The character named Kitty doesn't have cat ears. <laughs> Let's continue after that part one video, link in the description. Also one week left on both the Crying Cat Girl and Robot Burning Bread merch, link down below. And after defeating a turtle, we can now explore Isard's colony. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not doing his hero quest. Look, I mean, you get so many of them, but you can only use one at a time, and I'm still enjoying the robot goofball. And also I think his base is cursed. Like why are they constantly sporting? Well anyway, we head back to Sword March. Oh, a dragon. How are you easier than a giant gorilla? Well, here I learned that while you're in your Ouroboros form and start the chain attack, you actually get a different finisher where you first interlink as Noah, then another round with Mio for a lot more damage. While the gang learned that they shouldn't interlink for too long, otherwise they will overheat. Think it's something dangerous? Well, it can't be anything fun. You expect balloons and confetti with that noise. Maybe not. Oh. As we learn that the next Mobius. P. Oh. Yeah, maybe naming after the alphabets was not the best, eh? Anyway. Bird up. And I guess Tyon's full backstory just wraps up where Nimue gave her watch to him, which has her memories on it. As it goes, you wearing a watch and watching a sports match, that watch has memories of the match because it's in the watch. I think. So Tyon having the watch where anytime he watches more will make more memories. I think. Well, Noah and Mia are already acting like a 30 year long married couple. Come on, propose already! I'm just joking. And I spy with my little eyes some treasure. Holy moly, is that a Xenoblade 2 reference? Yeah, I like this, you know. As we see an otter. Uh. Is that? First time seeing it. Yeah. So they see Kevin's castle and continue through a forest. As we see Ethel having to report back to the queen. Mom. Also, why do British people pronounce it like mum? Are you my mommy? Maybe. Also, N is here, the golden console. You know, those rare ones you win in magazines? And shows Ethel the Annihilator, a device on the castle that can cause those annihilation events at a distance. And N is kinda hilarious. I'm saying an attack like the one you just witnessed can be delivered anywhere. Why did he say it like that? Anywhere. Also, no, he doesn't look like anyone we know. Get out of here. Only idiots would think he looks like anyone. You see, when I streamed the game, I didn't know he was- Mind you don't slip, <laughs> Mia also does the oldest trick in the book, pretending to faint so that Noah catches her. That container... <clears throat> Does it look like we can get to it from here? Why is she so adorable? I can come. Riku then calls us- Super villain pond. And Manana- Super villain pond. Just cause we fight. Hey, don't you say You're anything, you up. fuzzballs. I see how you fight. <laughs> Wait a minute. Riku? When did you appear in Leonardo da Vinci's painting of the Mona Lisa? And heading through, the gang get attacked. Judy, look out! Get down, Mr. President! No! <laughs> and they find a hero who, despite having cat ears and being an archer, is not voiced by Kitty Archer, who is the voice of Uni. Well, I wouldn't change Uni's voice for all the mac and cheese in Utah. I'll hit him, and then I'm gonna hit him again. And after their quest line, you unlock the robe sliding feature. Off we go. Man, Santa is so funny. Because you never skips leg day. Well, the group camps for the night, but some birds steal all the food. Yes. 
Why, that's almost as shocking as learning that all my videos have the same humor and editing style as the Waifu Blade series. So you can easily watch an insane amount of backlog on the channel on other games. And also subscribe for future games like Fire Emblem Engage and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Look, I change the names a lot on the titles because of the algorithm, okay? The content is the exact same, just on different games. I like that plan. Well, after getting mad at a hungry Manana. Manana is bottomless pit. As we see... Did they just repeat the voice slide? And wait a minute, how can they see this? Do they have cameras all around? Drones? Maybe? I don't know. Glad Riku had just power frame last night. Should perform 30% better than leading brand. What's your on about, leading brand? But then again, I am so suspicious of them all. Ujima flip. Also, yeah, this model bending is so cursed. As we grab some food. And learn about how Mia got her flute from Miyabi, who died and gave her the flute to keep the dream alive. You know, it's sort of like Tyon's thing. Also a dream that's gonna be short-lived because she's on her ninth life. Well, my de facto partner's running full steam ahead. I mean, I can't very well go backwards. Can I now? Your partners now, eh? And now we get a cutscene when Boliaris tells us what happened to Ethel. And man, it has to load each scene back and forth. Please, Nintendo, make a console that has an SSD so Monolith can load all the things they want. Like a Xenoblade X port. Who said that? So Aurora says N threatened to destroy Ethel's colony because the Queen knew about the flame clock being destroyed. And only if Ethel kills the Ouroboros, you know us, will they spare Ethel's colony. And even more so, Kamaravi has been told to work with her in this new mech they make with the help of P&O. Uh. With PO cruises. So he gives us the map for the castle and how to sneak in to destroy the Annihilator, which Ethel had snuck to him before he ran off. Man, this is getting so serious! Every time we run, why do we always end up getting drenched? I mean, feathers are a bitch to dry. Is it really swearing if a Nintendo character says it? Shit. Well, anyway, let's continue. Also, yes, I am still annoyed there's no voice lines, you know? Like, come on, it would've been quite funny hearing Uni say this! Like AI The Somnium Files 2 has this voice! Wait, what the heck? The snail in my ear is saying that Xenoblade 3 actually has more voice lines than Somnium with three voice directors? That means it actually has more voice acting despite these many unvoiced lines! So what you're saying is... ...that you want me to make a video on the Somnium sequel? Well, I don't know, I can't hear you. You type in the comments if you do. I like that plan. Well, let's get back to this game. Fate. Yeah, yeah, we love the designs in Fate. Fate, you say? As they camp in this very fantasy-esque castle. It's an apartment building. Where Mio realizing that she's a cat and that they never help out in the kitchen. Ugh. She gets mad she only has two months left to live and this journey is just taking so long and runs off. I mean, I get that, but we... You don't get it. Not at all. I'm just a regular guy. As Tyon doesn't know what a high five is... Ujima flip. What? Sorry. But I refuse to debase myself like this. Enrique! Meh! <laughs> Sound effects not help comprehension. Well, the next morning, the gym buddies go gymming as Mio and Noah apologize. No, Mio, don't be sad. Don't do the floppy ears. No! So Noah has the brilliant idea of swapping flutes so that Miyabi's flute will get to be used a bit longer. It doesn't always work, even that. Like last night. Oh, that. That was me being selfish. But now, I feel like we're starting to get on the same wavelength. Look over there. Anybody else feeling curious? Wow, I didn't die. I'm sorry. But outside the weird forest, we meet... That voice? Ethel? We know her name, so? And we go to fight with the consoles watching, with us easily winning. So, oh, mind controls Kamarabi's eye. However, the dude would rather stab his eye out than listen. Wow, Nintendo, you can swear, but no red blood. Mata. What was that? 
Asshole. So three of the clocks, they now help us killing the consoles. Oh, hey, come on, why are you fighting each other? Tear is the purpose of my life. Bro, you know you could have just no. helped us fight the you consoles? The no, the good character design, but also this guy who I barely don't know about, so I don't feel that bad. Well, O and P have to now fight. Oh, lordy, he coming. And now fights us by interlinking their Mobiuses. Oh, damn, that's so strong. How will we win? As Mio gets really mad. And the two Mobius don't realize that they also overheat, making black fog appear around them. We push them off and they explode in a big annihilation event. <coughs> Queen's fingers, that was close. Oh yeah, Uni has a real fascination with the Queen's body parts. Queen's wings are Queen's heels. Am I going to Queen's slow white wings does she want from us? Sleep well? Yeah. Well, sort of. Well, your eyes are red. Hey, shut up. So what if they are? And we move on. They'll come. Well, we reach Kevin's castle, but the front door, according to Noah, who has been here on Offseer camp, says it will be heavily guarded. So we should go around the back. But what if I just turn around and go through the front? Um. Hi? Truly, this is why. We'll never be able to stop fighting. So this is Ashira, who surprisingly helps us fight Kavesi, even though she is Kavesi. Now it's open season. Wait, what? Ashira's also got very nice design. Friends say but, why but? So fine, I'm doing a hero quest, where she, for various reasons, wants to kill her own colony. You're insane. Maybe you really have lost it. Uni, that's too far. Even for you. I'm feeling a little miserable, but... I can take it all out of my men, no problem. Yep, it's official. We found the worst commander. Uni, that's too far. So it's like her colony is fighting her because this console is mad at her. With a single order, I could have you creatures crushed this instant. Oh, really? However, Shira lets her live because she wants to fight her again later. I don't know what to say. This woman is something else. Honestly, it's kind of awesome. No one's ever talked that way to me before. I guess I'm happy, maybe? You ain't embarrassed, are you? You? <laughs> this is priceless. Yeah, couldn't you tell I was joking? I really seriously hate you. Yeah, so I'm gonna be using her as a hero, okay? Don't even ask for anyone else. Your life, your choices, man. But I can still collect more of them and see their storylines. So how about this guy called Grey? His deal is to give us guns. It was a warning. A small test. What's this crap now? Honestly, I don't get this dude. Seriously, Uni is like the best character to bounce oh, off. What with her quips? Man. So I swapped to his class, but I don't know, I kind of didn't feel like doing the ranged attacks in this game. I love it more with the physical weapons where you can feel the hits. You know what I mean, Uni? Bish bash bosh. Exactly. As we sneak around to the castle, while that girl from earlier spies on us. And now we have to get up close the quiet way. Or... Ah! And the goal is to sneak onto the mining ship so they load us onto the castle. Yeah, it was very sneakily. And once inside, we sneak on out, where I once again was picky with my classes because I realize I'm just a player who will play one character. I don't swap them out in combat, which means I need to have my party members have the abilities to topple and launch, you know, so you can make the enemies do the funny spinning. So yeah, you're going to see me randomly change between a few classes in the upcoming footage. However, as we reach the Annihilator, we get interrupted by the first Mobius we met. So who shows his face to be some blonde guy called Dirk. Oh, okay then, just some guy. Who is also helped by Joker as they now both fuse together and fight. However, Uni has a little story arc getting mad at D, being in her memory by distracting them while the gang destroy the cannon. And yeah, I don't know what's happening here. Before pushing DJ off, however they manage to escape. Also, yes, a monolith, I know you're very funny calling them DJ. Well, we see the two nerds. As we try and escape, but somehow end up in the Queen's throne room and meet the Queen Melia. You have returned. 
Oh, speaking Mind of, did you know the voice actor for her actually was the first confirmation we got of this game's existence? Yeah, she accidentally revealed it. And yep, she's a famous celebrity now who still wanted to come back to do this voice. She meant to be some kind of celebrity. Also in the room are these pods, the ones that were used to create all the child soldiers. As we see, Ethel being born again. Wait, what? However, after fighting and almost winning, but she randomly gets invincibility frames, it's revealed that Melia is... Oh, uh, yeah, that would be dumb connecting this to the other Xenoblade games. They would not do that. It's just a fake Melia. <laughs> just a reference. Anyway, N goes to kill us by giving Noah headaches. <laughs> but before that, Van Damme's team comes in to steal some pods, and we use this commotion to escape. N gets all mad and takes off his mask to reveal he looks uh, very similar to Noah. And then this console M appears, who looks very similar to Mio. Wait. As we now get a flashback to Senna for her little backstory, where she experienced American bullying. Totally. Right. <laughs> and to cope, she would copy Mio. Well, outside the castle. But aren't you a ginormous sparker? And as we reach the base of Sword March, Van Damme's crew comes out to greet us with that girl called Shania, who was spying on us earlier, and Monica, the leader of the people in the city, who live inside the sword and oppose Mobius. They then give us eye patches to block Mobius from spying on our location with our eyes. Oh, so that's how they tracked us before. Wait, but it's in the eye. How did they see the camera angle from above? It's Warrior? best not to think about it. And yes, this important cutscene is not voiced. Yeah. And it's kind of cool now that in every cutscene, menu, even chain attacks, they all wear the eye patches. And Monica here is the daughter of Van Damme, which surprises the group because what the heck is a daughter? What does that mean? Weren't you born in a tube like us? And now inside the city, they find residents whispering about them as they meet Ouroboros candidates who, along with Shania, were not chosen as the Ouroboros as only six can exist at a time. As Van Damme hitting that button back then made us suddenly get the powers instead of B's six. Where now Monica gives us the lore of the game. You, um... Man, that Dead or Alive game back then really was influential to gaming, huh? That's outrageous. So Monica says to follow Shania. What's that? I see some Look, relations have changed. Maybe we can go this way. You just said to follow her! Also, it's weird and annoying how the gang will do two lines of dialogue after a cutscene when you walk, but I don't know how slow people walk because sometimes it cuts off that second line when you reach the next part. Hey Noah, you know that pile of husks earlier? You aren't thinking about sending those on, are you? Will Noah send the husks on with his flute? I have to know if he will do the thing that he always does! So pretty much they steal the baby pods from Mobius because the cycle of life is that once people die, they get reborn in the tubes over and over, with the flame clocks feeding Mobius. Essentially an infinite feeding livestock for them, which is why Ethel was reborn but now has no memories. Monica says this is not how the world is meant to be! You're meant to be pumping out babies! That's the cutest f***ing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Who wants to know how babies are made? So after learning what couples do on a Friday night, we get taken to statues based on the founders of the city. Six people, the first Ouroboros, who everyone in the city is descended from. And the legend is that there's two real queens, not the robot Birdo here, created the Ouroboros to defeat Mobius. And we have to find them to return the world to how it was. You know, smelly babies and smelly old people. Well, the goal is to now sneak into the Agni inside's prison to bust out Gondor, who knows where the queens are. And we have to do a long fetch quest to get the materials to make a ship to traverse to see. In traverse we do. Well, there ain't no Kingdom Hearts 3. And now in the city you can actually meet another hero. All right people, what say we get a move on? Time waits for no Konyashenti. Yeah, okay, keep your air on. Who as a rich, rich sounding person wants us to escort them to Annihilation Zone. To Annihilation Zones? You must have nerves of steel. Marching straight into Annihilation Zones. Where we find... It's... 
a rock? Oh yeah? Which is a byproduct of the annihilation, i.e. it's a fancy cool gem she wants to sell because she's a gem person. Oh, yes, she's wait, so fancy you... she speaks huh? the ye old English. Nevermore. Nevermore. And now a thing is that at rest spots we can craft accessories with random effects. Hey, they bought RNG back. But okay, fine. She's the new waifu. Alright, Ashira, onto the vents. I gotta try her out on the team. And wow, she also wears an eye patch too. And so back to the ship, which is indestructible, Ooh. where you got so many islands to explore, like this one with the puzzle. An island of ladies who are very good friends. And we have to find info on how to sneak into prison. We fight Agnian forces. But holy moly, changing classes like this, having to balance tanks, attackers, and healers. Man, I almost died with her. Uh. I'm sorry, you're just not what I was looking for in a hero. Well, back to the constantly swapping classes till I get it right, I swear I will. As we break into the Agnian Guardhouse, where if you also lower the level on characters, it boosts their affinity. That is to say, having heroes and people wearing that class outfit on your team boosts this orange bar on the other characters to then let them unlock their class. So if you want characters to try out a class that is locked on this screen, fight higher level monsters to speed that process up. Well, we finally sneak into the prison and climb through the air ducts before finding Gondor, who turns out is Monica's daughter and also huh huh cut the crap any lights on in there you dead brain the absolute worst voice in a Hold jrpg on. no I, I i've heard worse <laughs> Oh my god, is that a horrible fake Australian accent? Like my ears actually hurt every time I hear her speak. I sure hope she won't be important in the end game. Ted. Yikes. However, she's happy living a current life and doesn't want the world to change. So who fights us? Are we win in battle, lose in cutscene. And she's like, fine, okay, take this necklace which will open the gate to the Agnian Queen. How and why do you have it? When all is lost, let him hear you roar. Lands and Senna get some bonding time. <laughs> you look short. Hey, you're the same height. Hey, you too, Shania. So turns out Shania tried copying Gondor's style back in the day, which annoyed her, mirroring what Senna did with Mio. They all are the same, okay? And all the while, you gotta do manual prison tasks like picking up items, picking up more items, killing giraffes, you know, the usual British prison stuff. But on the third day, we organize the escape with, oh no, God, no, don't join my party. Well, I guess I have less tanks now. And make for the exit. However, someone told the guards about this and turns out it's Shania who doesn't want a world where you only get one chance at life. And if you die, that's it. Am I crazy? Am I saying something strange? Well, um, I actually, uh... However, we distract the guards while Gondor makes a break for it, but then M and N turn up, giving both Noah and Mio headaches! Will we learn the truth about Noah and Mio's clones? Will Noah ever send those husks in the city? Will Ashira beat me up? Find out next time on Waifu Blade Chronicles. Only if this video gets 4.5k likes. Come on, it's lower than before. And you want to see the next part, right? Because surely nothing bad will happen to any of the characters in a scene that is one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the entire trilogy, right? Oh, come on. You've already told us that much, might as well give us the whole story. No, I need the likes because the videos aren't doing as well as the other Xenoblade videos. Lame. Trojan, Ramses, Magnum, Sheik. And a big cheesy thank you to my patrons, including Commitibus Crime, Coxal Sin, John Portergill, Master Pro, Nera, and Worker B. 